So in line with our focus on legacy, I have entitled my sermon, The Power of Legacy. So the theme of legacy is interwoven right throughout the Bible because God created us for legacy. There is not a person in this room that was not created for legacy. There's something in all of us, isn't there, that, that wants significant, that wants to leave a mark, that wants to um, attach value to our lives. So, you know, we want to be a great mum. We want to be a hard worker. We want to be a loving person. We want to maybe be a, a wealthy business person or whatever that is. But we want something nice written on our epitaph, right? Nobody wants, he was a grumpy old coot that did nothing. <laughs> See, we were created for purpose. Yes. We were created by God in his image. And God is a God of legacy that we see flowing through the generations and the, the language of the Bible is constantly generations because we, we read right at the beginning that God was the God. He was the God of Abraham. He was the God of Ajak, Isaac. He was the God of Jacob. The promise given to Abraham was passed on and accepted, embraced by succeeding generations. We read in Genesis 12 verses 2 to 3, it says, I will make you into a great nation and I will bless you and I will make your name great and you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you and whoever curses you, I will curse and all the peoples on the earth will be blessed through you. So we can read this promise and see how it began to unfold through as each successive generation stewarded the promise. Isaac, Ab um, Jacob stewarded that promise. But you know that same promise has followed on down through history and it is ours today. In Galatians 3 and verse 29, it tells us that we are the children of Abraham and heirs to the same promise. So that legacy is flowing through the promise. We are called to be people who bless the nations. We are called to be people who are blessed of God. So, you know, in Psalm 145 and verse 4, it says, One generation commends your work to another. They tell of your mightier acts. In other words, they pass it on. They embrace the legacy and pass it on. In the New Testament, we see that the apostles are so diligent in, in valuing legacy. They know that there is power in legacy. In fact, you know, you cannot believe in discipleship if you don't believe in legacy. There is no place for discipleship if we don't honour legacy. Listen to the Apostle Peter in 2 Peter verse one, uh, chapter 1 and verse 12. It says, so I will always remind you of these things. And he's talking about God's divine power. He's talking about God's faith. He's talking about goodness and God's long suffering. Even though you know them and are firmly established in the truth you now have. In other words, these are foundational things that Peter is talking to the church about. He says, I think it is right to refresh your memory as long as I live in the tent of this body, because I know that I will soon put it aside as the Lord Jesus Christ has made it clear to me. And I will make every effort to see that after my departure, his death, you will always be able to remember these things. Peter wrote because he's creating legacy. He wants to hand down the treasures, the learning, the wisdom, the truth of God to him. The Apostle Paul was also create, um, committed totally to legacy. We read in Philippians 2 verse 9 to 13, it says, I hope in the Lord Jesus Christ to tim send Timothy to you soon, that I also may be cheered when I receive news about you. In other words, Paul has embraced Timothy and, and he's embraced the church and now he's sending Timothy on to be his voice. I have no one else like him who will show genuine concern for your welfare. For everyone looks out for their own interests, not those of Jesus Christ. But you know that Timothy has proved himself because as a son with a father, notice that relationship there. He has served with me in the work of the gospel. 
I hope therefore to send him as soon as I see how things go with me. So Paul left a legacy with Timothy and to the Ephesian church. He's intentional in passing it on. He's intentional in instructing Timothy and instructing the church and encouraging them and guiding them like a son with Timothy. But Paul also left a legacy to us through the Gospels through his example, through his wisdom, through his letters and guidance. So what actually is legacy? Well, legacy is something that you'll be remembered by, something we pass down. See, our legacy is a testimony of influence that has been passed down to the next generation and remembered long after we have departed from this world. It's something we leave. William James said, the greatest use of life is to spend it on something that will outlast it. That is the power of legacy. Do you know whether people want to or not, whether you want to or not, you will leave a legacy. It'll either be a great legacy or it'll be a legacy you regret. But you will, one way or another, leave a legacy. For us, leaving a legacy is one of the greatest opportunities of our Christian experience. It's something that we should grab on and run with. See, it's the opportunity to leave a gift behind us that has an enduring value for the generations to come. It'll live beyond you and into eternity. See, that's why we're honouring today those of us who've left a legacy. You know, as part of its definition, legacy can mean money or property that is received from someone who has died. Legacy is similar in some ways to inheritance, something handed down from one generation to the next. Thank God for the faithful people who've left a legacy. You know, this building is a legacy. Do you know every building we've ever owned is a legacy to people who have sacrificed? People who have given, people who have invested, people who have seen the future. And so we know that this building, and I know that it's a heart that this building will be used way beyond our time. The young people coming through are going to use this thing for the glory of God. They're going to see multitudes of people getting saved. They're going to see this thing grow and out of this thing. So many other churches planted, so many disciples made, so many nations reached because that's what legacy does. That's what we do when we leave an inheritance and we give something. We sow into the future. Proverbs 13 and verse 22 says, A good person leaves an inheritance for their children's children or the the following generations. See, that's why every year we have building our future. We believe in legacy as a church, leaving something tangible for the future generations of our church family that they can grow and invest with. But you know, it's not just about money. The word legacy for us carries a timeless worth greater than just monetary value. See, Jesus' entire life was focused on leaving the greatest legacy ever granted. The gift of eternal life. That's his legacy to us. The cross and eternal life. The Last Supper, when he gathered his disciples the night before he died. That unquestionably is the most powerful and poignant gifting of legacy ever recorded where Jesus commissioned the disciples. And that same gift and legacy that Jesus left behind remains yours and mine. See, Jesus left the legacy so that our lives could count both now and in eternity. A legacy is something that is gifted to us in order that we can build and can gift it to others. The people that we're honouring today have left a legacy which by God's grace, we're going to build upon. Amen? You know, I was, um, when I was asked to speak, I was thinking about my dad. Uh, He's passed away now. But I was thinking about the legacy that he left for me. 
My dad was a successful businessman in Sydney. He owned a big business. And then he found Jesus. And so he felt God wanted him to let go of his business and go to a place called Carnarvon. He thought that was an outer suburb of Sydney. <laughs> so when he saw on the map where it actually was after he said yes, um, he, because he was invited to be a part of the NASA space tracking station, and he became the supervisor of the operations up there, uh, that space tracking station, he actually spoke to the astronauts as they landed on the moon. But you know what I hold in my heart? Is a man who put the calling of God before anything and the salvation of people as the priority of his life. Above money, above position, above title, he put all that aside. He left all of that to pioneer a little church in Carnarvon on no money. I watched him live by faith, trusting God every week for income. I watched his passion to see a Pentecostal church established when Pentecostal churches weren't the flavour of the month. They were persecuted. They were ostracised for their belief in the baptism and the Holy Spirit. I watched him pour his life into people, loving people and wanting to please and honour the God he served, living by faith. His life wasn't easy. You know, he retired with nothing. But I watched him grow in faith and become closer and closer to Jesus as he neared his end. As I look at that, I know that he left a legacy of faithfulness, yeah. of faith, of perseverance, a hunger for God, a love and care for people. I was thinking about my legacy and I did a very silly thing. I asked my sons. This is really putting your head in the block, isn't it? I said to my sons, guys, without thinking, tell me, what legacy have I left you? You know what they came back with? They said, amongst other things, Dad, we see in you faithfulness and faith. We see perseverance. We see love and care for people. We see a hunger for God and the importance of family. I don't say that to blow my trumpet, but you know, those are the exact things that I inherited from my dad. That was his legacy to me that has now become my legacy to my boys and my family. Hopefully, I'll be able to continue to build upon those things that my dad left so that my kids and their families can build further in their lives. Yes. See, legacy is something we leave to those following behind. But here's something. It's also something we build upon from those who have gone before. Yeah. Legacy is not just something that is left for us. Legacy is something that we need to embrace and actually begin to make the decision to build upon. We want that legacy to be better. I want the legacy that I leave my kids to be far better than the legacy that my dad left me because I want to build on what he left me. That is just a foundation that we've been handed. That is a gift that we've been given to invest in, to build upon, to see it grow and become more than ever we've been left. You see, we are receiving legacies while we are building legacies. We pass on so much more than the legacy that we receive. You know, when we don't build on legacy, it loses its potency. It'll die with that generation. Paul left that legacy with Timothy. 
Paul was so focused on investing in the people that were around him and following him. I'm so sure that Paul got such immense satisfaction as he sent Timothy off to pastor the Ephesian church because he developed him. Can I say this? Legacy is not about age and you don't have to be married to invest in legacy. Yes. Yes. Youth can be investing in the young people that are around them and following them and leaving a legacy for those young lives to shape them, to impress them, to help them, to see the importance of, of the values in life and the things that are going to help them moving forward. It's not about age. It's mums investing in their children and, and in other young mums. We can all be involved in legacy and leaving a legacy. You see, we have been given so much legacy to build on. Do you realise how privileged we are? We are so privileged. The great things that have been handed down to us from our families. And there's a kingdom legacy, as we heard at communion, that we step into at salvation. There's a God has a future and a destiny for us. He's embedded a legacy within us if we will allow that to grow and flourish in the purposes of God. And then there's a legacy that we received even here being in this church. You know, our leaders, the people that have gone before us have left us a legacy. There's a legacy being left by our senior pastors who love us, who love discipleship, who love connect groups, who teach us on wholeness, who are generous, who are loving and caring. That's a legacy that we can all build on. Don't let it stop here, but let it continue to grow so that Nations Church becomes everything that God wants it to be. And it'll happen as we embrace the legacy that is being given to us to see it grow and flourish and become so much more. See, true legacy is embraced as a foundation sacrificially laid for the next generation to build upon. You know, here's the interesting thing. When we truly commit to building upon legacy, we actually create culture. Do you hear what I just said? When we determine to build on legacy, we actually begin to create culture. You see, legacy is what actually creates cultures. A kingdom culture felt by those who became part of our church family and the legacy then becomes theirs. You know, when people come in, new people, brand new Christians, for you that are online, the people that you influence, they're imbibing a legacy. And if it's a healthy legacy, they'll imbibe it and it'll become a culture in their own lives, in their own families, yeah. with their own children and the people that surround them. See, and that goes from the youth group, the young adults, to the chapel service, all the way through. We can all create great legacies and leave great cultures. Things like wisdom and character, integrity, compassion, generosity, love, a passion for the gospel, a passion for prayer, yeah. a passion for the word of God. Yeah. See, these are the things that are going to come out of our life that as we practice, they begin to leave a legacy and create a culture yeah. that others can relate to. As we live them out, they become normal to those that we are discipling. See, our lives will, one way or another, leave a legacy, good or bad. Let's leave a powerful legacy. Amen. Amen. Let's leave a great legacy. You know, as I conclude, you may have been left a bad legacy by family or others that you've looked up to. I know that's the case for, for many. And this can and does cause problems. But friends, can I just say that Jesus is greater than any bad legacy that you've been handed or influenced by? Are you struggling in an area, maybe an area of habit or attitude or action that you know is not leaving a good legacy can I say, don't leave guilt and disappointment to have the final word. 
Jesus came that we might be free. Jesus gave us a foundation to build on that will bring freedom to our lives. Friends, can I encourage you, come back to the cross. That's where it all starts. Come back to the cross and give it to Jesus. That The legacy you leave becomes a power in your life for the people around you, for your children, for those that you are influencing. See, we can acknowledge the influence of a bad legacy but we don't have to live under it. There's freedom in Jesus. And you know, as a church family, we wanna stand together and help each other. You've heard me say many times, most of us are like the rest of us. And maybe, just maybe, you know, there are people that are surrounding your world. Some of the older people that we're honouring today, you know, they've learned a few things about life. They've seen some stuff. They've had to get over some things. They've had to work through some stuff. There's some wisdom there. Can I encourage you, if you're struggling in an area of your life, use the legacy that is right here amongst us. Go to connect groups and get involved with the people around you. Let their legacy begin to build something new and fresh. Let Jesus change the story and make it a legacy of power, a legacy of hope, a legacy of goodness, a legacy that is gonna lead others into the eternal purposes of God because that's His legacy for each and every one of us. Let's embrace legacy. See, legacy is not just what we leave behind, but it's also who we leave behind. It's who we leave behind that is hanging on to the legacy and growing and can become far greater. I want my kids to do far more than I've ever done. I want my kids to be far more than I'll ever be. I want to leave them a legacy that is powerful in their families, in their marriages, in their ministries. I want them to build. See, ultimately, legacy comes down to one question. Who are you living for? Who are you living for? If you're living for you, the best you'll do is you. If you're living for Him, the best you'll do is His best working through you. You know, there's power in legacy and every one of us are legacy leaders, leavers. Right now on this Legacy Sunday, I want to pray a prayer of blessing. Can we do that family? Over everybody. I'm going to, I'm just picking an age and I'm saying 55. We're all legacy leavers. But today we want to particularly honour those who've been on the road for a while. And so I'm going to ask if you're 55 or over, would you just stand to your feet because we want to honour you and we want to pray for you. Don't be shy. Um, Nobody's going to know, you know, you're, well, yeah, they might just guess that you're a little bit older than 55 or 55, but yeah, that's it. I want you to just look around for a moment. Friends, these are legacy leavers who've, done some tough yards, who've invested, who've given of themselves. Today, we're a product of many of their legacies. The input, the wisdom, the giving over many years that sees us where we are today. So friends, can we honour every person standing today? And can we say thank you? And we love you. You're amazing. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. And can I say, you are so needed. You are so necessary. Don't stop now. Let the purposes of God flow through you in a greater way. You believe God for more, for a greater filling of the Holy Spirit. You share the Word of God and the grace of God and the goodness of God that is your testimony. You share it with many. You begin to lift in a whole new way those around you. We need you in Nations Church. We value and we honour you. So come on, let's pray. A prayer of blessing. 
Lord, we thank You for every person that's standing. Father, this is not just about age, but this is about people. Lord, they've invested and they've given so much. Lord, we wanna say today we're grateful for the investment of their lives, for their faithfulness, for the things that they've overcome and struggled through. For Lord, for the fact that they're still here, Lord God, doing Your bidding, doing Your calling. And Father, today we pray Your blessing upon them. We pray Your blessing upon their lives. We pray, God, that You would bless them so that they can continue, Lord, to be a blessing to the generations. Lord, may the people around them, their families, Lord, those, Lord God, that they've given to, Father, may they rise and be greater, Lord God. Those, Lord God, who are struggling, Father, I pray Your strength, I pray Your encouragement. Father, I speak faith, Lord God, into them. Lord, we just bless You and honour You and thank You, Lord God, for your faithful children and all God's people said, Amen, Amen. I hope if you're watching online, you if you're over 55, you stood also. That prayer was for you. You can be an influence in your home. You can be an influence in your family. You can be an influence in your family and, and your, your world. And we're praying for you as well. We see you today and honour you for what you have given. Thank You, Jesus. Thank You, Jesus. Maybe you're here today. You know, and legacy is, seems a bit of a weird topic, maybe. You've been preached from a church, but you know, Jesus came to bring a legacy, to turn our lives around. As we've heard, there's a place at the cross where our lives can be made whole, the slate wiped clean. That doesn't mean the past just disappears, but what it means you have an opportunity to begin to speak as you move forward. You have an opportunity to begin to influence differently. Your heart is, is re, relocated as it were by the love of God, by forgiveness. You don't have to live in grave, in guilt. You don't have to live in condemnation. You don't have to live in fear of your past. You can be free today by knowing the love of the Lord Jesus Christ and the fact that He created you for a purpose. He created you for life. So if you're here today and you don't know the Lord Jesus while every head is bowed, I'm gonna ask you to do something brave. I'm gonna ask you to just slip up your hand because I wanna include you in a prayer that I pray today. I want you to encounter the love of Jesus. I want you to encounter Him. I want you to encounter His forgiveness because that's the legacy that He left when He died on the cross, when He paid the things that, for the things that have separated us from God, when He made sure that justice was fulfilled. He was looking at you. He has a place for you and a future for you, whatever your past. He wants to speak into your future. So if you're here today, while well, every head is bowed and you don't know the Lord Jesus, would you just slip up your hand so that I know I'm including you in a prayer that I'm going to pray. If you're watching online, I'm talking to you too. If you don't know the Lord Jesus, even where you're sitting in your room, in your bedroom, wherever you are, I want you to slip up your hand as a sign that you're saying, I want to know God. I want my life to be different. I want you to come forgive me and set me on a new path so someone today your heart's beating you know God's got is talking to you right I can't see any hands in the room but I'm going to pray anyway because I'm believing there are people watching online God is touching right now so come on family, let's pray. And you pray this prayer and mean it today and you're gonna encounter Jesus. Even if you're by yourself, He's gonna come. You're gonna know His presence. You're gonna feel clean. You're gonna feel, be filled with hope as we pray. So come on family, let's pray. Dear Lord Jesus, I thank You that You see me I bring my life to you. Will you take it? Will you forgive me? Will you cleanse me? 
Will you fill me with your life? Will you fill me with your love? Will you fill me with hope? Will you change my life and cause me to be a legacy maker that makes a difference from this day forward and into eternity? Thank you, Jesus, for hearing my prayer. Amen. If you made that decision, if you want to go to nationschurch.com forward slash my decision, we've got somebody who'd love to get in contact with you and bless you and walk this journey with you. Just before we finish, time is gone. But I'm going to ask something this morning. And I'm talking both to people in the room and online. You know, we have the opportunity to be great legacy leavers. But let me ask the question, who are you living your life for? What will be written on your epitaph? We all live in the dash. By that, I mean there was a man who watched his son as he was growing and he was about to enter uni and he was worried about his son. So he took him down to the local graveyard and he said, son, walk amongst the tombstones and tell me what you see. His son thought it was a bit weird, but he did it. And as he walked through, he began to, the son began to sober up. And he said, well, dad, I see that some of these people died very young. So Dad, I see that some of these people are buried together. He said, Dad, I see that some people have got stuff written on their epitaph and some people haven't. Some things are good. He said, but I also notice that on every tombstone, on every headstone, there's a date, a starting date, and a finishing date. His dad said to him, son, what is in the middle? His dad said, he said, the son said, well, there's a dash. His dad said, son, that's where we're living right now, in the dash. There will be a starting point and there'll be a finishing point. And it's what you do in the dash that'll make the difference in your life, and the lives of others. Friends, we have an amazing opportunity to leave a legacy. And today, if you've been challenged in anything in what I've said, we don't have time to go through a whole lot of stuff, but if God is challenging you right now in terms of the legacy that you're leaving, maybe an area of your life where the legacy, you look at it and you think, yeah, my kids are doing that. Or, yeah, there's things that. And the cry of your heart this morning is to say, God, I want to leave a legacy. A legacy that is going to speak of your goodness and your grace and your love. A legacy that's going to invest. A legacy that others can build on. A legacy that is going to speak of your goodness in my life that's you today and you're saying, God, would you help me? God, would you change something in me? God, would you see my prayer today that I'm committing in an area or maybe in all of my life to be a better legacy leaver? Then just stand very quickly wherever you are because I want to pray for you today. I want to pray that God helps us to be the legacy leavers that are going to leave this next generation with something to run by, something to run with, that our children are gonna be lovers of God's Word. Our children are gonna know what it means to pray because they hear and they see us praying. Our children are gonna know what it is to love because they know what that is to experience the love of the Father flowing through us. That our marriages are gonna leave a legacy that make marriage so attractive to our children. 
that our legacy is going to be celebrated with new buildings, with new church plants, with new nations reached for Jesus. Come on, just reach out your hand right now. You know the area of prayer. You know what God has put in your heart. Lord, I pray for every person who is standing today. Father, they may be the legacy leavers that You've, Father, You've created them to be. Father, in every area of struggle, I pray there be the power of the Holy Spirit. I pray there be the work of Your Word, Father, working with them. Father, I pray that there be an intentionality that would come upon them, that sees, Lord God, Your name glorified, that sees them living in the power, Lord God, of the cross and grace, that, Lord, sees them leaving a trail of legacy that is going to bring blessing and honour. Father, that is going to see the next generation and those around them. Father, living to their full potential. Father, building on what we've left behind. Going greater, going higher, being more powerful for Jesus. Father, I pray You bless every person that is standing. Father, meet with us today, we pray. And we ask it in Jesus' Name. And we ask it for Your glory. Amen. Amen.